was just staying here short term until I found my own place, which I have and I'm so excited. It's my first real New York City apartment that is like my own. I'm so excited to move in today. But first I have to pack up this place and get the boxes ready to go. My move is happening in multiple parts. So there's today and then I go to Boston tomorrow. I'm gonna pack up the rest of my apartment back in Boston where I was living with my boyfriend before. And then him and I are gonna drive back to New York City on Monday. And that's when we'll like really move in during the day on Monday. And then I start my new job on Tuesday. So many moving parts, so many updates to give, but I'm gonna do a little Q&A at the end of this video and answer all your questions that you may have. My last breakfast in this apartment. I'm having some granola with almond butter and banana. So I packed up everything. I have a box right here and then some more boxes out there. I'm now gonna head over to my apartment to pick up the keys. I'm so excited. Here. Oh my god. <sighs> I really feel good things are coming. Like, I really feel good things are coming. I've been struggling so much with this move and just feeling settled and the fact that I have a new job, I have a new apartment, I just feel like things are falling into place and I am very excited. I'm trying not to like get too excited because I tend to like put expectations on things and get overly excited and then get really depressed when they don't work out. So I'm trying to just like remain present, but you can probably tell by my voice that I'm like very excited and I just really want to just jump into this new chapter and I don't know, experience it. But I'm here taking it day by day, step by step. Like look at these windows. and bags I don't think it's realistic for me to be able to bring it all today but I think I could bring at least the small bags in an uber to the apartment and then I'll just leave the boxes here for later I have essentials with me so that's most important bye room this is the current setup I am getting really hungry though so I think I'm gonna go get a bagel because why not and I really want one which usually I love their bagels and the bagel itself was really good but the turkey bacon I've always been wanting to try and today I was like well why not but um, I don't think I'm gonna order that again <laughs> it wasn't like my favorite it wasn't bad I still ate it but that's a big part of recovery and food freedom it's just like I know I have the freedom to do that to try a new food out and if I don't like it it's not the end of the world. I didn't do anything bad, didn't do anything wrong. I just wanted to try something new and I discovered that I don't really like it. And then sometimes I try something new and I discover I do really like it and it's something I then eat more of, but not turkey bacon. Anyway, enough about my turkey bacon and my bagel. I ran some errands. I went to Trader Joe's and Target, my two favorite stores, and I was walking around. My shoulders hurt so much from just like carrying heavy bags. First thing is the shower rings and a shower curtain. 
because I have no shower curtain. I found these, oh my god, also last one on the shelf. Sorry, whoever wanted to get them after me. But I've seen these on TikTok and they're like the sphere ice trays because I will be working from home with my new job. So I will be making my drinks and stuff from home or trying to, to save money. And I got two utensils because they were literally $1 each and I don't have these at home and yeah, I just figured I would need them. I got more ice trays. I don't know, I guess you can't have enough ice. And then, this is actually the most exciting purchase, I feel like. A Brita. I've always used my roommate's Britas because I just didn't want to buy my own and all the roommates I lived with always had one. And now I live alone. So I had to buy myself one. And she was on sale at Target and I was like, I have to. And then last two things is like a sink catcher and some scissors. Good morning. It's currently 6.30 in the morning. I have been in Boston the past couple days packing up the rest of my stuff. We're in a U-Haul. The back is full of all my stuff. I'm here with Gerard. Good morning. <laughs> but we are ready to just like issue where our windshield is frozen over, so. Um, this is super fun. We're just waiting. We're making progress. Breakfast yeah. stop. Oh, Show us what we got. Show them what we Show got. The people. Show the people. Donuts. Oh, yours is so cute. My croissant. And I've never tried these Dunkin' egg bites, but they're good. This is your mocha. Mm. How's your sandwich? Yummy. Look how cute. That's way better than the blueberry one. Try to get back on the road. Got all my stuff in. We hired some movers and they were very, very helpful. I think it's called CNB Movers. Literally amazing service. 10 out of 10. 10 uh, out of 10. Everyone's a gentleman and they're so helpful mm -hmm. and very flexible. They cleaned out the truck in under 30 minutes. They were very helpful. <laughs> you cross your legs. We're testing couches and trying to find some last minute things before we drop the van off. Up on the brink of insanity. <laughs> My car. And I got one of these. Got our stuff. sitting on the floor eating my breakfast and surrounded by boxes. This is my first breakfast in my new place. I made a yogurt bowl with the Sky yogurt from Trader Joe's and bananas and blueberries. I haven't unpacked my cutlery so that's why I'm using a plastic spoon. <laughs> Yesterday was so hectic and busy but it was so good. We got all my stuff here. We Went to Ikea as well, so I got some new furniture pieces, which I'm very excited to build. Now it's just the part of like unpacking and sorting out what more do I need to store everything, maybe what do I want to give away, because I still haven't really gone through and sorted my stuff and my clothes, so I need to do that, but I'm so happy to be here. I woke up and it was snowing, which is just like even more perfect because the snow always makes me feel so happy. I feel like it's like, I don't know, a fresh start. And it just so happened to snow on my first like real night in my apartment, which really does make this feel like it's a fresh start and a new chapter in my life because it is. And a lot is changing, but all exciting and good things. And I'm gonna enjoy this and watch the snow and I'll catch you later.
I didn't make her cry for the record. Oh, of course. Put the flowers in? My anxiety made me cry. These are beautiful. Thank you, baby. I smell nice. Call me Luigi. We're making pizza. We have the mozzarella and tomato sauce. And we're having a little Valentine's Day pizza night. <laughs> These chairs are literally my dream chairs. I love this style of chair and I'm building it right now. I'm taking a little break from work to put together my table and chairs for this little corner. I'm so excited. It's gonna be like a little sunny corner. Next phase of my moving process. And then I think last phase will be couch, which should be coming this weekend. So I'm very excited. to do a quick little Q&A about how I found my apartment here in New York City. Nobody necessarily asked me questions, but I figured I would cover some baseline questions if you are also searching for an apartment in New York City and just my experience through it and my advice and what I learned. The first major question you may have is where to start. Number one, I would say if you're planning to move to New York City, wanting to find an apartment here, have money saved. I worked all summer, I worked while I was in college as well, and saved up a good amount of money so that I could come here and know that I wasn't going to be scrambling financially when I just arrived. Try to think of that ahead, try to save money if you can. Definitely moving here, especially on my own, I knew that I wanted that bank of comfort and security so that's one thing to keep in mind if you're thinking about starting you don't have to go that route but that was my experience and so far it's worked out two major websites you can use to look for apartments are streeteasy.com compass.com and i think there are a few others but those are the two main ones that i've heard of and i personally use street easy found a lot of success with that you can really filter what you want to search your budget what type of apartment you want what amenities and by neighborhood as well which is good Third thing I would think about when you're thinking about moving to New York City, you want to get an apartment here, is to do a little research on the neighborhoods. What area of New York City do you want to live in? The main boroughs are like Manhattan, Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island. I wanted to live in Manhattan or Brooklyn personally. I was looking at those places just based off where I was working as well and the places I like to go and hang around and walk around. So do a little research into what each neighborhood has, kind of the budget and price range of apartments in each neighborhood. And um, yeah, that's a good place to start. Next question is how much is it gonna cost? Yes, New York City is expensive. You do pay to be here for sure 
sure and personally in my opinion I think it's worth it I think it's worth the daily experience of living in the city for the expenses that you pay it's kind of an investment in my own life and my own experiences and just just being able to be here and experience living in this in this part of the country so I would say studio apartments were ranging between like two to three K a month one beds are maybe three to four K and anything up is four or five K as you get to more and more bedrooms so I would expect something in that price range you definitely can find some studios for under 2k I did and they tended to be more out of the center of like Manhattan or center of Brooklyn and stuff like that so there's definitely cheaper options just looking in different locations usually buildings and people listing apartments will be looking for you to make 40 times the rent and if that's something you can't meet if you can have a guarantor someone who can make 80 times the rent that is something that will really help boost your application as well but there definitely are ways around that and not having a guarantor it's not like you have to have one but if you can it definitely helps a lot in your application process and just pushing your application to the front because you have that guaranteed you know payment security as far as what you should be prepared to pay when you find your apartment if you're using a broker prepare to pay the fee for them usually it runs between one month's rent to 15% of the annual rent so in my situation mine was 12% of the annual rent so I had to pay the broker fee on top of the first month's rent and the security deposit for my apartment so those are just things to keep in mind as kind of the first bunch of payments you're gonna have to pay when you find your apartment next question you may have is when do you start looking I knew I wanted to move to New York City so I've been looking honestly for six months or so but I would say you only really need to start looking seriously maybe give yourself two to three months before it's very rare that you'll find something right away that works and fits I went to a lot of showings saw a lot of brokers and was just messaging a lot of different people about different apartments because one day they'd be available and maybe I'd see it but then it would be gone and off the market the next day someone else took it so that happens a lot and things move around super quickly here so there's always new places coming on the market and always places going off the market so give yourself some time to find places that you like visit some places but also give yourself time because things are gonna go away and, and you know pop up so it's not something that happens within a day with that being said though if you do find a place that hits your boxes and you love it act fast get your application in as soon as you can if you have a guarantor get their information organized as soon as you can and just act really quickly on it because like I said things go really fast next question you may have is how to prioritize your must-haves in an apartment at the beginning when I was looking was trying to check like every single one of my boxes in my future apartment here in New York City and I quickly realized that is just very unrealistic so I narrowed down my list of maybe like six to eight priorities in my apartment to only two and my top priorities to me were having big windows for natural light and location and of course within my budget as well so I guess those were my three because my budget I couldn't really go much higher than than my budget so that was a priority having big windows some form of natural light and I really wanted to be central in the middle of things walkable to lots of places so I had to let go of building amenities rooftop laundry and dryer in unit that's something that is gonna be hard to find in New York City especially if you want to be more central maybe in lower Manhattan East Village West Village once they add a washer and dryer it just like hikes up the price a lot so I'm learning how to use laundromats and having fun with that and very happy with my priorities and how I narrowed down my must-haves to just two to three things that is a big piece of advice I would have as well next question is about brokers and if you need a broker or should use a broker personally in my experience with this apartment and I had another apartment back in 2022 when I lived here before I did use brokers yes I did have to pay the fee which is kind of unfortunate and annoying but personally in this experience as I was looking alone and really doing this apartment search on my own having a broker was so comforting and really helpful for them to advocate for me and push my application forward because they're the ones like really in contact with the people at the building but I think next time I'm gonna see if I can bypass using a broker and try to contact the listing agents right away and sometimes if you look at maybe higher rise luxury buildings you can apply straight through the building rather than having to go via a broker which will then again avoid the broker fee in my experience having
having one was very, very useful and helpful because again, I was alone, I was new to the process and he just helped me find a place that checked as many of my boxes as I could and definitely did check my top three priorities. So it was worth it to me. I did have to budget for the broker fee, but that's the price I was willing to pay and it was worth it to me in this case, but you don't have to use a broker for sure. Another question you might have is, do you have to be in New York City when you're looking for an apartment in New York City? And short answer is no. I got my first apartment while I was living in Boston. So I was outside of New York and I did have two roommates. So kind of between the three of us, we were able to communicate and get the apartment. But overall brokers and agents aren't as willing to give apartments to people if they're not able to come visit in person before signing the lease. We were able to, we found a broker who was helpful. Yes, he was expensive, but we were able to get a place to stay for that semester. If you can come into the city to visit places, I do recommend that more because now in this time around with this apartment, I was able to go see multiple apartments in person. I could really compare and contrast the pros and cons. And just being able to walk into the space gives you so much more of a realistic evaluation of what it would be like to live in that space rather than through photos and videos and stuff like that. So short answer, no, but long answer, I would say yes, if you can come, it's a lot more helpful and you're more likely to get the place you want, I feel like. So then I want to wrap up with my overall last tips for finding an apartment in New York City. If you want to go for the more quintessentially New York look for the apartment, I would look for pre-war buildings. My building is that one and usually those are the ones with the big vertical windows. They have fire escapes. They're kind of more quirky, kind of not super pristine and clean and modern at all. But personally, I love that and I've had knock on wood no issues with my apartment yet and they just have more character and you know more kind of weird quirks to them and tiny bathrooms and weird windows and like the fire escape is cool as well so if you want that look then I would look for the pre-war buildings but if not there's tons of luxury high-rise buildings and more modern built buildings that maybe have like gyms and pools and other amenities inside with them so personally I wanted to go for the character and that works for me and I like it a lot number two tip like I mentioned before, have money saved. Just try to prep yourself as much as you can. Things do cost money and they are expensive, but like if you're coming from a suburb or middle of the country or something like that, yeah, it's gonna be a big jump. But I came from Boston, so it honestly wasn't a huge jump and I was used to seeing prices like this or rent for food, for gyms, for day-to-day -day life. But yeah, just any way you can try to prep yourself financially, that is a big, a big tip. And then a third thing is to really ask yourself, what are your priorities to you. The priorities for me will not be the same priorities for my friend if they were looking for an apartment. I really did care about location, like I said, about the natural light, and it didn't really matter to me much about the size as long as I could sleep there and comfortably walk around and cook and stuff and do apartment essential things, then I didn't mind how big it was. But someone else might really want the space and they maybe they have more things and they need more space, so that would be their priority. So really think about what's important to you, what's gonna make you happy in your living space and go by that rather than what you feel like you should follow or what your friends are doing and stuff like that. So that's another big tip. Let me know if you have any more questions on this. I am very happily settled in my apartment and I know everyone has different stories about finding their apartments in New York City, but this was mine and hope it was helpful. And thanks again for being here and I'll catch you in the next video.